Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cycling Chasers update tonight the 27th of February 2013. Tonight we're going to discuss Tropical Cyclone Rusty's landfall and future movements as well as looking at the Coral Sea for the next potential tropical cyclone in a week or so time. Alright, so let's get into it. Latest look at Rusty at 5.30pm you can see that the centre of circulation is now across the coast uh, and it's across the coast in the vicinity of Pardue. We'll go through the radar imagery very shortly but you can see the system now crossing the coast. From now on it will weaken probably uh, slowly at first because it's still in pretty good spot for for, um, for not so much intensification now that it's over land but at least maintenance of the system uh, or slow decay um, but eventually over the next 24 to 48 hours it drifts into a uh, further unfavorable environment in the atmospheric in the different levels of the atmosphere and so you're going to see that the system will probably degrade relatively quickly once we get out to 24 to 48 hours uh, and it gets further inland so if we overlay wind shear to what I'm talking about you can see that the system now currently 10 to 20 knots of wind shear uh, and it look because it sort of started drifting towards a slightly increasing wind shear um, it may have a, it sort of started to weaken the system just as it crossed the coast but overall still reasonably good conditions here 10 to 20 knots of wind shear still fairly fairly favorable but as I say it's not going it's go not going to intensify at all but it might just slow its decay down a little bit over the next 12 hours but look as it tracks towards the south it's going to head into more and more wind shear wind shear is the change in di of direction or speed of the winds in the atmosphere with height cyclones won't survive in in any more than 30 knots they won't develop in any more than 20 knots and they really like 10 knots or less so you can see the system's track it sort of went through um, some very light wind shear but has now crossed the coast and is uh, getting into an area of increasing wind shear so despite the fact that it's now not even over water so it's going to weaken anyway it might weaken a little bit faster uh, as it pushes into this area of very very high wind shear in the next 24 to 48 hours Dynamic model guidance suggests very, very tight consensus of the models suggesting now a south to southeast movement for the next two to three days, even going out past that through, through central parts of Western Australia and into southern Western Australia. It's not going to become a big rain producer for eastern parts of Australia. This is going to remain a Western Australian system, maybe pushing into western parts of South Australia if, uh, if this, let's say, the GFS verifies. But overall, it won't become a major rain producer for eastern Australia, by the looks of things at least anyway. Uh, look, once we, once we get out past around this region, it's no longer tropical, and so we don't, we don't pay too much attention to it. So we're not too sure, but at this point in time, look, long term, it stays through WA. But for the short term, it still poses a threat to areas like Marble Bar, uh, maybe even as far as Newman um, into Western Australia. So let's have a look at its expected track in a bit more detail using the Euro model. So tonight, 8 p.m., cyclone uh, expected to be 8 p.m. WA time, expected to be just inland of the coast here uh, of Pardue um, and pushing now in a south-southeast or south direction. And we should continue to see that track over the next couple of, or the next day or two. But look, it does weaken out by, by you know, early tomorrow morning where it, we're down to about 976, 980 hectopascals. And it continues to push in that south-southeast direction as we head so what we're seeing here in terms of the uh, the coloring is the amount of rainfall you could expect with the system we'll also go in and show you the amount of wind you'll expect with the system as we head inland now remember marble bar still still firmly in the path of this thing as possibly a cat 2 intensity type system uh, by the time it gets to Newman we're probably looking at a, uh, a low end category 1 um, type cyclone and you can see here even the rainfall starts to decrease around the system the system's translate, translating very quickly so it's moving very quickly uh, to the south southeast and uh, because of that you're not going to see accumulated falls anything like what the coast saw um, eventually later on in the forecast the, the, the system rather than continuing out to the south southeast stalls a little bit again uh, or pushes a little bit more towards the south southwest and a little bit slower as it encounters a, a mid-level ridge which could hold halt its movement to the south if that happens, then as we head towards the, the wheat belt of WA, you could see a, a little bit more rainfall than, um, than we anticipate. So, um, so that could be something we need to watch later on. Now let's focus on the winds. 
You can see by 8 p.m. today, really the winds located mostly to the south. There's there is still some strong onshore winds coming through. Look, Port Hedland definitely dodged a bullet today with this system pushing a little bit more towards the east. Ended up crossing over 100 k's away from Port Hedland. So Port Hedland, uh, don't even think that you saw the worst of this thing. This you, you sort of uh, you sort of saw the outside edge of it, if you like, um, and you still got winds over over 100 k an hour in the outside edge of it. So you can imagine what the centre part would have been. Uh, people in Pardu that would have experienced that and De Grey, let's not forget the De Grey station out here uh, which would have, wouldn't have would have actually seen the lull of the eye but would have just been raked by the winds of the western edge eye wall which is very very intense throughout the day so we haven't heard much from De Grey station but we have heard from Pardu station they are okay and we've also heard from Pardu Roadhouse on the radio they are okay, uh, Ian there is okay so that's fantastic news everyone is safe and well we which is great stuff. Now let's continue on. Sorry, I digressed. Let's continue on here with the uh, with the expected track and looking at the wind speeds. And you can see here that the system really weakens very rapidly after after landfall in terms of wind speed. So even though the pressure doesn't drop by too much, it's six around 980, but the wind speeds itself at the surface drop remarkably. We're down to a Category 1 wind speed by 2 a.m. Western Standard Time tomorrow. Um, and as we head into, um, into Thursday, Thursday morning and then Thursday lunchtime, and by Thursday afternoon, there's really nothing to speak of this being a cyclone at all anymore. Um, as I say, it drifts into that really, really intense wind shear, and because of that, it probably dies a little bit faster than we would normally expect. Um, however, over the next 6 to 12 hours, it should hold itself together reasonably well, but then tomorrow, uh, it really dies very quickly. So that's, that's Tropical Cyclone Rusty in a nutshell, the next 24 to 48 hours of it anyway. Uh, as I say, it's still windy for the next, uh, next 12 to 18 hours, and then after that, uh, probably Category 1 wind speeds at most, which means most of the area inland is going to be pretty safe. Might be a little bit hairy for Marble Bar for the time being, um, just because of the system not quite weakening very rapidly, very, uh, very quickly, sorry, as it heads inland, but look, uh, after that, anything further inland should be okay. Just for the archives, folks, let's have a look at the 12 hours today of the system as it makes landfall. You can see the system makes landfall right at about 3 p.m. Western Standard Time, maybe just after, and the system is now just inland of the highway. The system centre is just inland of the highway, continuing to push south-southeast. Now, worst case scenario for Marble Bar is if it pushes south from here, because that will put Marble Bar straight into the eye wall, and the eye wall will still be reasonably intense by the time it gets through Marble Bar, so you might see 100 plus kilometre an hour winds there um, as that pushes south. So. Hopefully, with any luck, it'll push south-southeast and Marble Bar will miss the eye wall and just get a fair bit of rain and some gusty winds. Uh, but uh, we, do, we do caution that if it does push a little bit more to the south instead of the south-southeast, Marble Bar is still in the firing line. As I say, once it gets through here to Nullagine and then as it gets towards Newman, uh, because of wind shear, it'll, it'll decrease rapidly any chance of any chance of damaging destructive winds uh, down here past Nullagine at least. But Marble Bar still in the crosshairs, um, but we're hoping that the system continues on this south-southeast track for at least another five or six hours, and then if it pushes south, it'll still likely be just east of Marble Bar, um, so they won't cop the worst of the wind either. So let's hope that happens. Okay, folks, that was Rusty. Uh, we'll keep con we'll continue to update you on Rusty tomorrow morning as well. But uh, tomorrow night, I think we'll we might be our final update on Rusty as he dies inland. Now we do have a low that we're watching just off the coast of Bowen to Townsville. But this low, uh, not expected to form into anything too significant. It's certainly a low, no doubting that whatsoever. And you can see on radar a clear circulation near Townsville at the moment. That low will push towards the north. It shouldn't develop uh, into anything significant. But it's still a feature even into Friday. And as we head into next week and as the monsoon develops, 
we actually start to see an increased chance for cyclogenesis over the later in the weekend, but particularly into next week um, with, with cyclone potential increasing. And you can see the low just sort of meanders around, um, associated with a bit of a weak trough system off the Coral Sea. Um, it just meanders around into Sunday and into Monday and as I say next week things do start to get more favorable for a potential developing system and so we will need to watch this low um, as we head into the early part of next week and we start to see look at this northwest flow coming into the Coral Sea uh, and because of that we might see an increased chance of convergence, increasing vorticity, which is just spin in the lower parts of the atmosphere. And if we get an increase of those things, we might even see the potential for this to spin up into something a little bit more significant than modelling is showing it's at the moment. But look, overall, we are looking at the Coral Sea firing up. Uh, more so than the Gulf of Carpentaria. Models are pretty clear on the Coral Sea firing up towards the end of next week. Let me show you some of the ensemble models. So as we head into next Wednesday, the European ensemble is very, very keen on, on creating a low pressure region here in the Coral Sea. Where exactly in that Coral Sea? Not quite sure, but the favoured location is somewhere in the northwestern or, or central western Coral Sea, um, off the coast of between sort of Cairns and Townsville is where it develops the tropical low most intently at least uh, by next Wednesday. And if we then have a look and track the system as it as it goes through to next Saturday. Next Thursday, we look at the system slowly meandering to the south or south-southeast, but really quite slowly. There's a bit of a break in the ridging pattern here. Now, remember that we're only looking at the surface here, but really cyclones won't try and push directly towards highs, so they'll try and push somewhere in between them. So if there's a little break in the ridge here, the cyclone or the low at that point in time might try and push a little bit more to the south-southeast. Let's have a look at how that, ha how that changes on Friday. By next Friday, we see the ridging re-establishing itself here over southern Australia, which will probably try and stop any further movement to the south um, of the system, unless it's way out here in the eastern Coral Sea, in which case it'll probably just drift, continue drifting out here to um, through Vanuatu and into the southwestern Pacific Abyss. But if it's closer to the coast, it'll probably try and stop its southward movement uh, anywhere around the Mackay area or northwards, um, and so therefore that becomes a very interesting scenario for Oz Cyclone Chasers um, as we head into next weekend. Not this weekend, next weekend. It's still a long way away, but this is why we look at an ensemble instead of a instead of a single run, because a single run might just go crazy and show a big cyclone here, but that might not be what the ensemble is suggesting. The ensemble has a lot more chance of being accurate once we get into the mid, uh, medium to long term. And really by day 10, which is next Saturday, the look, we could have anything from a tropical low on the coast to a tropical low out here in the central Coral Sea to a tropical low way out here near Fiji. The model just uh, loses all sense of all sense of any consistency. Um, and we see just a general area of low pressure in the Coral Sea. Obviously the most favoured location, central to eastern Coral Sea. Once again, a very nice and strong ridge here at the surface coming through, which is going to try and stop anything from pushing to the south any time, at least with any speed. So we do have a situation where we will need to watch the Coral Sea very, very closely around about the end of next week. So a look at the upper levels of the atmosphere tells us that next Thursday anything that's happening out here in the Coral Sea is likely to push in that direction. It's because we've got a bit of an upper level trough here over Queensland at the time. Uh, so anything that develops east of that upper level trough um, and sufficiently south to be influenced by it, so anything sort of can southwards, will drift towards the southeast. Very little doubt about that in most of the model guidance at the moment. But that does change as we head towards next weekend. So looking again at the upper levels by next weekend, we have a situation where we now have very, very weak steering. And so the, the system, wherever it might be, uh, will be free to meander about to the west or not really north, but um, to the southeast, south or, or southwest or west even. Uh, but it will be moving very, very slowly at that point in time because there's nothing to suggest too much steering happening at all. Uh, but look, we are looking a long way away, a long way into the future. Um, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But 
the, at least we understand and we want you to understand um, that we are watching the Coral Sea for very, very, very strong consensus of development of something out there um, towards the end of next week. Uh, where it goes, far too early to tell. If it develops too early in the week, it's likely to whisk off to the southeast due to an upper level trough. But if it holds off until later in the week, the steering mechanisms in the Coral Sea get very, very complex again. So the Coral Sea is probably the most uh, difficult basin to predict cyclone movement in. That and the Gulf of Carpentaria are a bit, uh, are very, very similar in terms of how difficult it is to predict which way things are going to go, especially out to this sort of lead time. But look, very good model agreement that something will happen here and that something is likely to be a cyclone uh, or at the very least a very strong tropical low. Uh, but when exactly it happens and so where it happens, it is really, really the key to what it will do in terms of its movement. For those of you wondering what the other low is doing, uh, what would have been called Sandra, it's likely to die out completely very shortly if it hasn't done so already. Look, it's undergoing a lot of that vertical wind shear that we talked about, uh, and look, it really has very little chance of survival. So, uh, by the looks of things, Sandra might be the Queensland Cyclones name late next week or into next weekend. So, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but at this stage, as I say, very high chance of at least a low, uh, at least a decent low, not like the one that's off Townsville now, but a decent low developing out there, um, and then a moderate chance of a moderate to high chance of a tropical cyclone developing out there uh, as we head in towards next weekend. As I say, once again, the key is when it develops. All right, folks, thanks for watching tonight. Uh, great to see that Pardo is safe and great to see the Port Hedland dodged a massive bullet, and I mean a massive bullet. Uh, this could have been a disastrous system for that particular region, especially for the economy. Um, I mean, having Port Hedland in, red, in the red zone for, or sorry, in a code red situation for an extended period of time would have hurt the economy big time but having a cyclone a category 4 cyclone pass over the top of the over the top of the region um, would have been just ad adding insult to injury and, and adding disaster to that economic inconvenience Thanks for watching tonight, folks. We'll have another update, as I say, a pretty short update on what Rusty's doing as he weakens as he heads inland tomorrow morning. But our next Tropics update will be tomorrow night and will likely focus more so in the Coral Sea than this one did. Thanks for watching again, and we'll talk to me tomorrow.